it's plant-based chat today and i'm so happy to have you in my kitchen and in marley's kitchen we're going to be cooking up some really really fun stuff today um i met marley i'm trying to think i think we met virtually before yes. we met in person and i think we had some sort of weird thing years ago that like you and I were like the top two vegan Pinterest something in yeah. Cision, Cision. And that's how we met because my friend's like, oh, I know her. You should talk. And then we started talking yeah. some. It was like a rando thing. That's back when I was winning Pinterest. I have not won Pinterest in a very long time. You probably Pinterest still Pinterest is just winning. hard to, no, I, I have a hard time figuring it out nowadays. Yeah. It, <laughs> but we were rocking it for a while. We were. We were like, woo. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and for I think most people know what Pinterest is, and some people call it Pinterest, and some people call it Pinterest, and I've not been to their property, so I don't know the proper way to say it. Do you, Marley? I just call it Pinterest, so that's I do it probably, that's probably how we say it in the Midwest. Well, you know, uh, with Califia, I always say Califia, and now they're commercials, so I know it's Califia Farms. Oh, oh, you just okay. So I read my daughter the book, uh, the Harry Potter, when she was little, and uh, Hermione. Okay, I didn't know how to say. It. I'd never heard of that name before, and I was reading it to her. And I, I said Hermione. <laughs> Hermione. <laughs> Luckily, I was reading it silently to myself, and I always just make up these things. I don't even say yes. them all the way out. And then when the movie came on, I was like, oh. Yeah, well, trust good. me, there will be plenty of opportunities for me to mispronounce ingredients <laughs> coming up. So I, Sean, my husband, calls them Marleyism. So it's the, you know, get used to it. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I do it all the time. So I last week we um, did a show with um, Dora Stone, who I don't know if you know. Um, sh she does amazing, amazing Mexican vegan food. It's Ooh, crazy. Nice. So if anybody missed that, you need to go back and watch it, Marley. If you don't know her those tamales so she made this great mm. thing and, and so I had to say I'm gonna mispronounce all the things because she's pronouncing poblanos properly and yes. you know, and tortillas and I'm like but I said you know give me a little bit of wiggle room I said but I can't pronounce English words either so don't take any offense right because it's like <laughs> Worcestershire yes. sauce, Worcestershire, you know, I get it right like one every 50 times. Yes. Um, but now I always... I actually have Worcestershire in this recipe. So, and I have a tendency to pronounce it the way I'm typing it. So I don't misspell it when I'm typing it. So it's Worcester, but I know it's Worcester. I, I just, I have to really think about it before I say it. Oh, that's awesome. And I see a lot of people... But always, Kathy... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I did a whole video on uh, garlic confit, but I didn't know it was pronounced confit. I pronounced it confit the whole time, all the way through. Confit, confit. And I, of course, people gave me a lot of hard time over that, but oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I'm from uh, Missouri. What can I do? Well, see, I just play it off as I'm a middle-aged lady. I only have X <laughs> amount of brain cells and things happen. <laughs> and yes. I'm also Southern, so I can make people feel bad about trying to make me feel bad. Yes. So it's like, I don't know if they, I, I lived in St. Louis for three years when I was in grad school. But yeah, um, they... in the South, if you bump into me, I will say, oh, excuse me. And <laughs> it will either be not a nice word to you, or if you say, oh, I'm so sorry, then all is forgiven. But if yes. not, then it's a nasty <laughs> thing and it's not a nice thing. But uh, I was going to be outside again today, and I raised the umbrellas, and then it's like heat advisory, and it's like in the 90s here today. So I quickly came in. Yeah. Marley came on a little bit early, and I'm like, I'm still clean it up a little bit <laughs> because I was yeah, going to do it outside. How is it It's there? super hot. Oh, it's super hot. It's heat advisory temperatures and humid. Ugh. Good day to be inside. Well, I thought like that whole like – when I lived in St. Louis, I thought it was not going to be as hot. Now, this was a bazillion years ago. This was probably, I don't know, 32 years ago, so a bazillion years ago. And I lived near Wash U because I was going to um, yeah. St. Louis Conservatory, which was a music school that doesn't exist now. Um, I did not know that. Yes. You went to a conservatory, huh? I, what, what instrument? 
French horn. So actually, I used to play professionally in New Orleans in the Louisiana Philharmonic. Uh, That's how I ended up. You were just full of surprises. It's true. Not and some yeah. of them are good ones. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I always, okay, so my daughter was a cello performance major, and so I've been to a lot of symphony performances, and I always, um, I don't know what I think about French horns, I felt bad for the horn section, because if it's a, if it's a, let's say it's a 30-minute piece, and the French horns come in for one minute, you have to sit through that whole time, and you have to kind of pay attention, I don't know, I think it's rough, it would be hard. <laughs> well, I got so good at just, I, I was good at multitasking before multitasking was a thing, and now yes. you're not supposed to do it, but some things I'm good at. So like, I literally, and this was in my professional job because the guy who hired me actually left and he was like, I never minded you reading through all of that. Cause I would read, I've read like five or six books a week. And so oh, yeah, I, I would just read. And then I would, I would know when something would happen that we would have 10 measures to go. And so I was always, oh, okay, we've got yes. 10 measures to go. Cause I was the assistant principal, which means I was kind of, the helper. Wow. And yes. yeah, he's like, cause you've never missed anything and you're just reading along and just doing your thing. So it, it's very interesting cause you just get used to that and you hear certain things and have certain clues kind of like, and then you grab client. your French horn and you're ready to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's very, and the whole assistant principal principal thing is very interesting too, because if something happens to him, then I go in and play his part. Like, um. so like we were somewhere and there was a big air conditioning gush and his music went away. So I'm just came in, uh. no one knew anything happened. And like, we were just very, um, very connected. And I, I loved mm. working with him. The, the next horn person I wasn't that way with. So after that mm. year, I left the orchestra, but like our year together, I think it, it was, was a year, golden. maybe it was a year and a half oh. was like perfection. It was mm. exactly what I had wanted to have that job be. But Cheryl do you, says, did you miss it? No, everybody always asked me oh. that. Um, did I love doing it? Yes. I have to do something creative. Mm -hmm. And so in the time when I wasn't playing French horn, I was doing a lot of Aikido, which is a Japanese martial art. Then I kind wow. of, and so we went to a lot of uh, like seminars and practices and had different teachers. So I had that kind of learning creative focus. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. I started doing, I taught myself how to do web development. And then I did that for a period of time. And then I kind of edged over with all this cooking recipe development stuff. <laughs> I love it. I, I love interesting people, and you are definitely one of those people, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I you know, like some, okay, like some people you meet, and then it's like the more you get to know them, the less interesting they are. You're one of those people. It's like, it feels like every time I talk to you, I learn something new about you, and it's like, this is so cool. Oh, <laughs> that's very sweet. I always think of it's like, is it interesting? Like, I hope you have an interesting life, which is kind of like a- I know, that's mm. not always good, yeah. But no, no, I knew <laughs> you didn't mean it that yeah. way. I knew, I knew you meant it in the best possible way. In the but, best possible way, yes. But I think yeah. we all, you know, have these kind of insecurities and things, so we always are like, hmm, but- um, Yes. Oh, Apple says that was awesome learning more about you, and Apple is in Vancouver. Aww. And you guys tell me, I, I didn't ask the official weather question yet, but of course I want to know what the weather's like here. Cheryl says, the heat, who's my wife, says the heat index in Durham is supposed to get to 109 today. So it was a good call for me to be by the air conditioning. Oh yeah, you would be sweating, it would be bad. <laughs> well, yeah. that, Marley, you would never be on passed again out, if maybe. I like, passed out outside. <laughs> and then you'd be like, Yes. I guess I'll just I'm glad you cooking. moved inside. <laughs> yeah. You should keep cooking yeah. though if anything happens. It'll be exciting. Yes. So I, I will. <laughs> okay, yay. Yeah. So um we were talking about I think we met and we were talking about Pinterest a little bit and so then we finally met at IACP, which is the International yes. Association of Culinary Professionals. I was speaking on a panel about cookbooks and you yes. were covering it for your blog, I believe. Yes. Uh huh. And it was super cool. Yes. 
And I think it was in Los Angeles, wasn't it? It was. It's the only time I've ever been in Los Angeles. Mm, it's um, a great place. Yeah, it was in, it was interesting. I ate some delicious food and got to hang out with some cool vegans and met um, Elizabeth Ando. Did you meet her mm -hmm. from Japan? I think I did. She's mm -hmm. amazing, and she does a lot of Japanese cuisine. Aha! Mm -hmm. And Cindy says, hello, I am new, and we are so happy to have you here, Cindy. We're just hanging we out. We are. We're going to chat. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> and then I'm going to let Marley cook eventually, I promise. <laughs> but there's a reason this is plant-based chat. There is chatting that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. But um, we hung out and we like really just gelled and we, we had dinner together and it was just lovely. And we I've been on your podcast before. Yes, several times, I think. So yeah, a couple times at least. Yeah. Now's my time to get you back. No, that's right. That's right. You're getting me back. <laughs> So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you, um, your book, your blog. So she blogs at Namely Marley, and that's down below. You guys can see it. She can't, but it's there. I promise. Yeah. And it's, I always tell people it's Marley without the E. So it's M-A-R-L-Y. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I started, I kind of am like you. I had this kind of different past. I was in business. Um COO of a company and, you know, doing all the business things. I just found it to be very unfulfilling. And at the same time, I had some kind of health concerns going on. Like I had irritable bowel syndrome and, and changing my diet was a big part of uh, fixing that. I also met my husband and he was vegan already. And I, would, I was vegetarian at that point. So it was kind of fun to make that switch over to vegan. And of course, then it's like, I got to cook stuff. I want to make things. And so um, it my I had a blog already and I just kind of slowly transitioned it to uh, vegan recipes and now it's what we do we Sean and I do it together we shoot the recipes shoot the photos and, and the video and all of that and so it's kind of nice that we can do this together I really enjoy it and and um, and it's been a great learning process for me I really have learned so much I mean it seems like like, you know, you could grow up your whole life making something and then realize the background behind it. I don't know how to explain that, but I think in, in my re my recipe development, I have learned so much more about cooking and, and I love that. And I love sharing that with other people too. <laughs> and I agree. And I think that like, I learned so much doing recipe development. So like one of the things that I love is kind of getting that those shortcuts, those ninja tricks yes, and things like that. Right. And then sharing them because people think a lot of things are scary that aren't. And I, I right. like, you know, and so having those really good, clear directions and having somebody else to do it before you is super helpful. Yes. And I always say, I, I mess up so you don't have to. <laughs> I love that. That is so good. Yes, I, I must so you don't have to. I like that. That's good. In other words, you're fearless about the mistakes because that, that's how you learn. And then the other people can just come along and learn from your mistakes. I like it. That's Absolutely. Good. And sometimes, the, and I think even you may have talked about, because like everybody's like, well, what's the worst mistake you've ever made? And I'm like, hmm, let me look in my Philo decks of 8,000. <laughs> but there is one yes. that's worse than everything else. But what happens is people will say, don't do this. So I'm going to find out why. So sometimes uh -huh. I'm like, they were liars. You can pick up your slow cooker lid. It will add some extra time, but people say, don't ever do it. Well, that's not right. true. Right? Yes. And the other thing I learned is that there's more than one way to chop an onion. Like, I think some people are kind of snooty and be like, oh, there's only one way to cut an onion. <laughs> but you can cut an onion many different ways and it all works. And, and I love that. And so like, I have a friend who likes to make the one perfect best recipe. So she wants to make the best biscuit. I want to make the biscuit that everyone can eat. So, mm, yes, uh, you know, mine's going to have what a is the free best, option, right? an oil free option, a salt free mm -hmm. option, things like that. Oh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Now, mine isn't going to be just this one recipe. It's kind of like this base that we mess with because someone who doesn't eat oil will be happy with vegan yogurt biscuit. If right. you're a person who eats coconut oil, you're not going to be happy with that. You're, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. So many things to think about when you're recipe developing. Yeah, that's a good point. 
It's true. Now, one Auntie Venom, who, and I love her name because it's Auntie, like Auntie Uncle, one Auntie okay. Venom. Um, because I'm, I'm just like actually like a little goth chick at heart. So I, yeah. I love it. It says, wait, where are the older vegan men hiding? I never met a single one. Oh, <laughs> my husband's one. <laughs> yeah. So you may have to start a matchmaking service. <laughs> There probably already is one, you know. Oh, there probably is. Vegan, sh vegan singles, look that up. <laughs> but be careful. Well, actually, in Kansas City, Sean and I met at a, a – Kansas City had a vegan meetup group. And so that's where we met. He was actually uh, coming – he had just moved here from another state, and he found the meetup group, and they have this big annual Thanksgiving where everybody brings something. I mean, they have regular get-togethers. And so that's how we met. So that, that was kind of fun. That's awesome. So try it out. Apple says there's lots in Vancouver, BC, mm. and all over the Pacific Northwest. So there's your clue. I don't know. There you I'm, go. I've been all, I'm all boring and married and stuff. And I'm like, we're going to go out to see a movie. You know, like when you're in your <laughs> 20s, you're right. like, oh my God, I've got to do something. I'm sitting here trying to read, yep. but I can't do it. And now I'm like, mm, that means I have to put on pants. I know, exactly. <laughs> Yes, but and, and we love our own cooking, so we actually don't go out to eat very often either. So we're really, we're old married, boring people, I guess. <laughs> the best kind of people. So let, let's go back. and So you talked a little bit about okay. how you became vegan. So mm -hmm. I know you have a book because I remember I was with my friend um, Jenny Field when you called me to talk about that, getting yes. the book deal and things. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, that's right, because I know you were so experienced with all your book deals, yeah. Yeah, so it was exciting, and it's about meal prep, which is something I really love, which is, so it's, a, it's called the Everything Vegan Meal Prep Cookbook, and it's all about, like, how, how to make, for me, I think meal prep can be a couple of different things. For some people, it's like, uh, let's chop up all these ingredients and have those ingredients in the fridge, and that's one version of meal prep, but for me, meal prep is, Let's make up five different dishes and freeze them, and, or, or you know at least put them in the fridge, and and then bring them out on Tuesday night and and just reheat them and maybe add a little sauce or something. And that's my version of meal prep, which I really like. That's what we do. <laughs> I like that. So I was even wondering, like, so we could make two of these lasagnas or like double the stuff we're doing. Yes. We could have one now right. and freeze one for another time when it's too hot to cook and we don't want to deal with anything. Right. And the fact the recipe that I'm going to be making for you today, this is a great segue, Kathy, <laughs> is, is um, vegan meatloaf, which freezes wonderfully. And, and so I, and I absolutely love this dish. So I love having it around because, you know, on a Tuesday night, you don't want to cook. I make this on the weekend. It's kind of easy to make and then it's easy to freeze. And then you just pop it out and cook it in the microwave or whatever. And it, oh, it's a great Tuesday night dinner, is what I think. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So actually, yeah. um, is there anything else you wanted to say, or do you want to just get started on your recipe? Because if you are, I will turn to full Marley view. I feel like we'll be chatting as I'm cooking, so yes. we could go ahead and get started on the recipe if you want. Let's do it. It's now, all you. What I did be what I did before we got on, on, you know, on live is that I added a little bit of olive oil to the saucepan uh, skillet. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and what I was going to tell people is this is the only oil that's in this recipe. And I know some people are, would like to cook, like you mentioned the biscuits. some people want oil free and this is so easy to make oil free because all we're doing is cooking the vegetables. So you could use white wine. You could use a little bit of vegetable broth. You could even use a little bit of water. I think Kathy, you mentioned if you um, have a non non stick skillet, you can actually even use nothing. Right. So, so I, a lot of times now, and um, Joanne, who who hangs out with us a lot, is the one who really talks me out of using water. So like when I'm teaching a class, I use too much water because I'll use I'll be cooking three things at the same time. But if uh -huh. you're at home and not being a crazy person like me, starting it off with no <laughs> water and then just yes. adding a little bit extra, right? As you go along, as you notice right. that maybe something's starting to stick a little bit. So um, yes. Cindy says, and I love this, this is so sweet. 
Kathy and Marley, you both have awesome personality. Ah, thank you. That's so nice. <laughs> Um, I just put in a cup of chopped onions. Today, I, you can see that I'm using red onions because that's, that's what I have in the fridge. And that's what I like to do. <laughs> I like to improvise based on what I have. Normally, I would probably use like yellow onions, but obviously red works just fine. So uh, you were talking about the water. I mean, the thing is, things like onions will release their juices anyway. So that it will add some moisture to the skillet, don't you think? Absolutely. And sometimes it just depends too on how slow or fast you're trying to go, which sometimes for me depends on how hungry I am. And yes. I chop up onions ahead of time, as many of you know. And so then I put them in the freezer in a, in a Ziploc. Oh. And so I just knock the Ziploc against the counter and put the frozen onions right in there. Hmm. Interesting. You know, the, the cool thing about that, I actually listened to this podcast and I don't remember who it was, I think it was somebody who did a vegan podcast and it was like five episodes. So I, I don't remember it, but I do, they interviewed a raw vegan chef and he said that uh, freezing onions was a great way of breaking them down so that you didn't have to cook them even. So that's, you know, in other words, the freezing process actually breaks it down, softens them up a little bit. He was talking about making uh, sushi. Okay. And that's how he was able to make his sushi raw with onions in it was by, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. Isn't like it? people are, because I also slice most mushrooms. So like portobello, shiitake, any kind of button mushroom. I would not do that with super expensive mushrooms like chanterelles or yes. oysters. But, um, and then I just slice them up and freeze them just as is. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I like that because then, then if you just, what, I'm just asking you, Kathy, like, mm -hmm. like when you're cooking a meal and you need a cup of chopped onions, do you just grab this? I am, I envisioned you with this bag of chopped onions in your freezer and you just go grab out a yep. scoop and throw it in. That is wow. exactly it. And I do that a lot for classes too. And so, and actually, okay. didn't we, I think we did, I've been unboxing my CSA or community supported agriculture farmer yes. box. Uh -huh. Um, mm -hmm. and I got a bunch of onions and they were new onions, so they couldn't just sit out. So we actually, right. we did it. I call them chop and chat. So I chopped onions and we just chatted and people asked me questions. <laughs> I could never do that. I would be crying. You know, these Chopping were so onions? new, they weren't really bad. Like I've had it be bad oh, before. Okay. Over the pandemic, we yes. did like a three hour live where I just chopped stuff up and people hung out okay. with me. You know, another tip I heard about uh, chopping onions and not crying is that you can put them in the freezer for 30 minutes before you chop them. And it, there's a chemical in them that causes the tears and that chemical rec recedes a little bit. It actually worked. I tried it. Oh, that's great. I should try more things like that. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> so, and I don't yeah. have your name, Facebook user, so I'm sorry, but if you put your name in next, I'll, I'll address you. It says, they say, I think the secret to freezing onions and celery and mushrooms is to lay them out on a pan and freeze them and then scoop them up and put them into the plastic bags. That way they're separate and not a block. When you great idea. Them. And yes, I, great that idea. is the best way to do it. And that, and usually my freezer <laughs> is too full for a sheet pan to go in there. So I'm just like, <laughs> yes. But if you, if you don't make it a big, fat, full Ziploc, but a thinner Ziploc, it's a little easier. Oh, it's Anita. So uh -huh. that was Anita's um, suggestion. And she does That's a great actually, tip, because otherwise you've got like this big clump of frozen onions, right? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I do. So what? No, I'm you just get your ice chipper out and just chip away. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that, like... <laughs> I, I will tell you the best and most right way to do it, and then I may or may not participate in that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the, That's how I am, too. Do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, someone has to see if it can happen or not. Um, Cheryl says right. most of the times I do. So um, okay. I think she's just trying to come to, to my know. rescue. though. I want her to pay attention to how much your husband is doing in your business. She's actually do editing videos for me now, but I'm hoping that she comes on board a little yes. bit more. And you guys, this recipe, uh, oh, you go by Anita Fay. I'm sorry, Anita Fay, that I, I did not give you both names. Um, 
And what was I, I was just, oh, okay, this is what I was gonna say. See, I told you I forget some stuff. Um, <laughs> this recipe, you don't have to write it down because wherever you are, look to the, up to the side somewhere, there is a link to this recipe because it is on namelymarley.com. You could even just go yeah. to namelymarley.com and search meatloaf. Meatloaf, and it's right there, yeah. Yes, and um, I'm actually cooking these veggies, um, but I, I also recognize, like, when my mom would make a meatloaf when I was a kid and I would help, she would just chop raw onions and put them in. So th there's a part of me that wonders, I can imagine that you wouldn't even have to cook these veggies first because we're going to put them in the food processor, they're going to get broken down a little bit, and then they're going to get uh, cooked in the oven for an hour. So, you know, I just like this step because what I feel like what happens is that, like I had mentioned before, the onions release, release their juices, and, and I, I like a little bit less moisture in the, in the meatloaf, but that's just me. So Well, I think, that's, I think um, one of the things, too, is like when you're dealing with meat and then they're having breadcrumbs and different things, probably the amount of breadcrumbs was up to take care of that moisture that was going to be released in the oven. So you probably yeah. could do it. Mm -hmm. I don't see all the things you have, but I think I see some oats. So like probably if you didn't want to saute them, you know, it's that your food processing and they're going to be really small. If someone doesn't want to, yes. I bet some extra oats or breadcrumbs or something like that. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing we're adding is TVP, which is textured, textured vegetable protein. And that is kind of a filler that, that works really well in this meatloaf as well. So that's that's a good point. Have you ever used what I'm soy doing pearls? Is I'm... Soy pearls? I have not used that. Oh. Are they dry? Oh, Marley, we've got to talk. You are going to be in love. Okay, and there's an, I'm not okay. trying to bash TVP. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, okay. Soy curls is actually made by Butler Foods in Oregon. And it's non-GMO okay. soybeans. That's the only ingredient. So they cook the, the soybeans, smush them, but they look like large chicken strips. And I've oh, made them into tacos. I make them into a lot of things. And some people like them a little bit more than TVP just because they're not at, quite as processed. And okay. though, again, there is nothing wrong with using TVP either. But if you prefer soy I pearls... You can just crumble them with your hand or just pulse them in a food processor and use them the same amount. But I see. So they may come in a bigger strip, but you can crumble them down to use in a recipe like this one. I just got a giant. OK, I'm going to share to where we're both here because I'm making okay. I'm making shapes with my hands. That nobody sees. So I think I got a big giant. <laughs> that nobody box, can see. <laughs> right. And they yes. usually come in little bags, but the big giant box. And it's Marilyn and um, Joanne that clued me in on this. They actually separate theirs out because some are really long strips, some are medium, and then the crumbs are at the bottom, and then they use those for tacos and stuff. So, oh, and you can nice. keep them really good. for a really long time in the freezer. So, it's, And where do you get them at? Um, Butler's, Butler Foods. Okay, Butler Foods. And I can I'm gonna check that, that out. Link. That sounds really it's good. It's very interesting, and I really like it. I've done a lot of recipes with them, so I'm going back to full because now I am not making these shapes with my hands okay. that no one can see. <laughs> yes. Now I get to go back to making shapes with my hands. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So I'm cooking. What I've cooked in here is this is one cup of onions, one cup of celery, and uh, one cup of chopped carrots. And I just chop them up. I mean, we're going to put them in the food processor so you don't have to, like, you know, be particular about how you chop them. Um, just just get them chopped so that they, they, we're not trying to also get them, um, like, super tender. They're just a little bit tender because, uh, again, they're going to be in the meatloaf cooking for a long time. But then at the last, like, when you have about a minute left, I add... This is three cloves or two or three cloves of garlic that I've minced up. I don't like to cook garlic too long. I don't know how you feel about this, Kathy, but um, I think if you overcook garlic, it can get kind of a bitter flavor. So it can. That's why sure. I added it to ask. Yes. So I add it last. I have lots of little dishes. Can you can you see that? <laughs> Those are the so, best, anyway. though. I know. I know. So basically, this is pretty much done. So I'm going to turn the heat off and just let it sit for a second. I'll scoot it over just a bit. And now the real star, I, re I really you just need these two things. And you could use a blender, but I'm using a food processor uh, to make this recipe. And of course, you need a loaf pan. 
but then again, you could probably make it into patties and cook them. It would work that way too. That's my dog, Otis. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes, and we might have to see him if he if he wants to come out later too. He's very shy. He's if I could get him, you would just love him. He's just adorable. Otis, come here. You want to say hi? Oh, see, once he knows you, you want to, you want him for something, he is not going to come. Oh, that's but if like I could every, grab him, I would show you. Every, He's pretty every adorable. dog and cat ever. And um, one of the questions, and I believe this is from Anita Fay, how long can you keep soy curls not frozen? I have limited space in my freezer. It kind of depends on your house. And I, I've been able to keep them much longer because, oh, look at that cute puppy. Oh. <laughs> Hello there, sweetie. Yeah, he can't hear you, but yes. Oh, that's <laughs> He's like, right. What are you cooking? What? <laughs> He's like, I kiss what are you mommy. cooking? Yes. He's like, He's pretty is that sweet. For pretty me? sweet. Um, yes. And with soy curls. <laughs> anyway, you were. Okay, so with soy curls, usually it depends on the weather. They'll go more quickly in the summer because of the heat. So if you can keep them in the fridge or the freezer, that's best. With that said, I am not keeping my big box in the fridge or the freezer, but it sure is right by the air conditioning vent. And oh, I find to also keep it my, my pantry cool. is really close to another air conditioning vent. So mine tends to last a little bit longer than other people's. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I'm, I'm, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm excited to try this. I love trying new things anyway, so I... So I, I, mean, I think I'm hearing you say you can almost like put them in a skillet and cook them up and serve them like chicken tenders. To well, okay, totally. So what you do is they're dry. So they're just dehydrated okay. soybean strips, which you could see in other okay. places, but they're usually have more ingredients than just soybeans, non-GMO soybeans. Okay. Um, you rehydrate them. So sometimes if I'm doing an instant oh. pot dish or a slow cooker dish, I'll just add extra water or mm -hmm. broth or whatever, and just let it all cook together. So like I make um, a tikka masala with them. Mm -hmm. I've made air fried soy curls, like kind of Southern style. I've made crab cakes with them. Mm -hmm. So like really anything nice. that you could use TVP for or any kind of meat substitute, you probably could use this too. It does sound like at the bottom of the bag would be the crumbles and that would be perfect to, to use like you were saying earlier, like for put taco seasoning in the and, and use them for tacos. That would be yeah. so good. And actually on healthyslowcooking.com, yes. I have a whole bunch of soy curl recipes. I have a taco one too. All right, I love it. Let's okay, so on yeah. to the food. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to change the subject. We can talk all you want about no, no, soy no, no, curls. No, I wanna see what you're gonna do. And okay. what food, what kind of food processor do you have and why do you like it? This is a Cuisinart. It's a 14 cup food processor. I like it. I, the one that I got before was a Cuisinart and I think got it cause it was, I don't know, maybe it was on sale. Sean and I went shopping. It was like one of the first things we went shopping for. And we just use that till, you know, it, it la it's a really good, they last a long time and we use it a lot. So it felt like it's a little bit more expensive but it was worth it to us because we use it so much. That's, That's kind of how I feel. That's kind of what we did with the Vitamix too, because we have a smoothie every day and we found that most blenders just don't handle that daily churn very well. Right. So that's why, you know, we splurged and got the Vitamix. I kind of like, if you feel like you're using it a lot, it's worth it to spend a little bit more money just to try to, you know, have the longevity of the, rather than throwing things away that, that then die. I hate that. Yeah. My husband hates that too. So yeah. Awesome. So anyway, it's a quiz. Event. Yes. And what I'm going to add is uh, one cup of, these are rolled oats, which I, as you know, are a little bit thicker than instant oats. And I think that that provides the best, best texture for this. Um, but you could use instant oats, but I think you would just need to add a little bit more. Is that, have you found that to be the case, Kathy? Yeah. And it's cause like anything that you use whole and then maybe pro using the food processor, you notice you lose some of that yes. volume. Uh, right. Yeah. Ooh, what's that? And then I'm going to add, one cup of of walnuts and this is where the fat source for this recipe so it i like the walnuts because they add flavor but they also add a, you know just that good fat that you need in a meatloaf so i'm putting that in there and i like to process this first and I, as i'm saying that to you i'm wondering where the lids of my pot is <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yes. I like to process this together first because it kind of creates a little, like a meal, like a flour, or coarse flour. Mm -hmm. You see how I'm doing that? Just first. There we go. I don't know if you all like to see this, but if I if I bring that closer to the camera, can you see that better? Yeah, you can see that pretty good. It's, it's almost it's, kind it's a of, little little coarser than cornmeal. Yes, yes, it's a little coarser than cornmeal, but the walnuts have mostly been broken down. Whereas I think if you add everything together, those walnuts, you know, they might you might get little chunks of walnuts in there, and I'd rather have the walnuts kind of distributed throughout. That's just me. <laughs> and Iona says she loves walnuts and they bring a lovely texture. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Like, I've, have you ever tried those? Like, people make walnut burgers and it's like a lot of walnuts in there. You're right. The texture is just amazing. Yum. So, we're going to add some nutritional yeast flakes. This is a quarter cup. And I, I don't know. I just love nutritional yeast flakes. They add just the right, right flavor, I think, you know, that kind of cheesy. I like cheesy flavors. So. I love yeah. nutritional then, yeast. Yes, it's it's good stuff. I actually have a little canister just full of it. <laughs> I put it on. Oh, I don't put it on everything, but I I use it. I don't it know if you've seen my canister before, and I know that you probably can't, but I'll show it to everybody else. Um, I'll go back okay. to this. So I have a handmade pottery one, and it has nutritional yeast stamped in it with a little spoon oh, and that's the person nice. who makes this is back on Etsy. So, um, I know Ugh. I eat, I put it in the group. So don't forget, I have vegan recipes cooking with Kathy Hester. So if you guys want to go over there, I will put the link over there and now back to you. Okay. And I'm just adding these cooked veggies into the food processor and I like to use my spatula to get every last bit of it because I like it. I like it all. I feel um, you. Like I think a spatula is one of the most important kitchen tools you can have. I agree. I completely agree because I don't like to waste. I mean, it's amazing. Like even when you pour something, you notice how much is left in the jar there, you know, like if you're measuring from a teaspoon or a tablespoon, I don't know. I like to have a spatula to get all that out. <laughs> so anyway, so I just added the cooked veggies. I got the nutritional yeast flakes in there. Let's see what else we're going to add. This is what I call sausage seasoning. I mean, you don't have to do this, but I do love the flavors of, of I think they add some really good flavors from sausage. And here's what this breaks down to. I've got it. I've got it noted on the site. I mean, I think you can just buy this already, or I actually just will make a big bunch of it and have it in my, um, you know, in a measuring, like in a glass jar in, in my pantry, but it's fennel seeds combined with caraway seeds, dried thyme, dried sage, and a little bit of paprika. I, in fact, use smoked paprika because I like smoky flavors. So what can I say? Anyway, that's what this is. You want to it see looks great. I'm it? team smoky too. And in every book that I've done, I've had a sausage recipe. <laughs> yes, you, I think I did your oat sausage recipe. Yes, it's really good. <laughs> yes. Oats crazy can taste like sausage, sausage. Girl. who knew? <laughs> yes, that's right. You're the crazy sausage girl. I love it. <laughs> but it's interesting to me, like a bacon would be another one of those things. Like it's it's the flavor of of smoked and maple syrup and, you know, and you can just put that on anything. I do it on almonds. It's it, and, and The other day when I went to a 4th of July party, I did it on pecans. I just cooked pecans mm -hmm. in that little stuff and it tastes, it tastes bacony. It's really good. I put it on salad. So it was good. I love that. Cause I do, I make a marinade and sometimes I'll do a marinade with tofu or tempeh, but you can cook mm -hmm. mushrooms, any, anything you make crispy. It's amazing. Yes, yes absolutely true. Okay. So then we're going to do, this is speaking of smoke. This is a little bit of smoke sauce and I like adding, I think, it gives it kind of a meaty flavor if you add a little bit of smoke sauce. I like to add a little bit of ketchup. I mean, if you can, you can use tomato paste if you'd like, but uh, you know, ketchup is just easy. Most people have it in their fridge, so or on, in their pantry. That's just one way of keeping this recipe easy. Now, one thing that's not easy is, as as we said, Worcestershire sauce. This is my home, homemade version of it. Um, it's. It, it's super easy to make, by the way. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever made it yourself, Kathy? I have. 
And it's because fun. finding finding vegan Worcester sauce is not easy. Sometimes I I really struggle with finding it, and the quality is very disparate. It is. There's a couple of brands I don't like. I like the guy with the wizard yes. hat a lot. I forget what yep. brand that is. Mm -hmm. But for a while, and I don't, always check labels. But for a while, um, have you ever tried this one? I did not like it. I'm just oh, you. I've never tried that one. It's very watery. To me, that's a, it's not right. But uh, okay. Well, the I'm, regular Whole Foods brand, I think it was three sixty five, was yes. vegan the last time oh. I looked. So look, because here's wow. the thing: what's not vegan about Worcestershire sauce? Anchovies. The fish sauce, yes. Yeah. The fish stuff, yes. Uh huh. So yeah, but it is super easy to make it yourself. And what I like about making it yourself is that um, you can get it nice and thick. That's what I didn't like about this one is. The, of course, I think everything is better when you make it yourself, and that's one of the reasons I kept that jar is because I'm gonna the next batch I make I'm gonna pour it in that because it's already labeled as vegan Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Nice. <laughs> so anyway, yes, <laughs> but yes, I think it's better when you make it yourself. But but said, it, I don't think you use a lot of it, so you can just go ahead and and buy it. That's it, it'll last a long time even if it's pricey. It'll be fine. But I bet you Whole Foods is a good one. And I think it was a little less expensive and. The one thing I like making stuff yourself, there's two really good reasons to do it right now. One is because you're eating, you know, a special diet and you want to maybe not have salt in yours or maybe not have sugar or right. maybe not. So if you make mm -hmm. it yourself, you can really do that. The other thing is if you've been to Whole Foods or a grocery store lately, like staples like that, I feel are going up really fast. Yes. So they're right. becoming yes. quite expensive. Right. And if you look at the ingredients, it's really nothing very like apple cider vinegar and it's not stuff that's very expensive. So it, it's way cheaper to make it at home. Do you have the recipe for the Worcestershire sauce on your? I okay, do. Great. It's on my site. Mm -hmm. So Iona yes. was saying, asking, how can you make that? So go look on namelymarley.com and look it up mm -hmm. and you can find her recipe. And I can tell you how it's spelled because it's spelled Worcestershire. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't even going to try that's how to I spell say it. it. <laughs> that's how I say it in my head. And I have to translate it and say whoosh or whatever, however they, I, see, I can't even say it right. But yeah, yes. Anyway, <laughs> the next ingredient that we're going to add is tamari. And I use tamari because I, I it's basically a gluten-free version of soy sauce. If you don't have problems with gluten, use, use soy sauce. But I like keeping things gluten-free when I can. Because it just makes it better well, and I, for more people. I can't eat gluten now. I think I could eat gluten when we actually went out to dinner. And one thing okay. to notice that I was shocked by is some tamaris do have wheat in them now. They, what? A long time ago, it was always wheat-free, and I found some that had wheat in it. Um, and yours probably doesn't, but it's just like the weirdest thing. I found a couple, and also you can find some gluten-free soy sauces now. Yeah, the Sanjay oh, is great. Sanjay this is Sanji, it. Sanjay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm calling it. I never heard it said, so don't don't trust me on the pronunciation. How'd you say it? How'd you say it? I think I said Sanjay, Sanjay, San, uh, Sanjay. Sanjay. Okay. No idea. Uh, it could be Sanj. <laughs> right, let's do that. That sounds really nice. Sanj. Yes. Kathy, make some. <laughs> Kathy and Marley make up words. <laughs> show. Avec Sanj. <laughs> Sounds very French. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they have. It says a, brewed soy sauce. So. They're great because they have a line of pre made sauces yes. that are gluten free, clearly mm -hmm. labeled gluten free and vegan. So, like for orange sauce, general sauce. Yeah, I like their orange pow, sauce. Uh -huh. And they're. Yes. To, that's, I keep a few of those around just for nights that I can just pop some tofu yes. in the air fryer, make a stir yep. fry, and there you go. I know I do it. We do it too, because sometimes you just don't want to mess with all the sauces, you know, just yes, fast, fast, fast. I love it. Yeah. No. So I love that. I brand. always have tofu. But by, by the way, I was going to ask you, what's your favorite tofu? Because I just discovered Costco has tofu. And the nice thing about it is it's kind of already pressed. I don't know if you've noticed that. Is it's it? Very, it's, I, it's very... I haven't bought it because, okay. So I like oh, extra no. firm. It just as a okay. rule of thumb, but usually extra firm, you still have to press. I've been right. keeping on hand 
the it's like it's called extra firm high protein like it's the one that's mm. not in the white plastic one but it's in all plastic they've got it at trader okay. joe's and and things like that it's organic it's a little bit more but when you take it okay. out of there like maybe three ta two or three tablespoons of water come out and oh, you oh, can wow. cut it right up and do whatever i can crumble it right oh, up into nice. a scrambled tofu so it's an mm -hmm. immediate tofu but now that you're saying okay. the Costco may be sort of pressed, I may have to try that. Cause... The only thing is, I like, I don't like to use it when I'm making my tofu salad, which is like a vegan's version of egg salad, because it's a little too firm. In I, I like the a little bit softer tofu, so I like I'll use extra firm, not pressed, for my tofu egg salad. But other than that, I I really love Costco. It's cheap. It's it's um, it's great great texture, and I don't have to press it. I just chop and cook and Ooh. throw it. Like you say, throw it in the air fryer or throw it in the in the skillet and cook it up, and your dinner's done. It sounds like a Costco trip for me. And a, I've done <laughs> an egg salad a different way, like with part. And usually, I use the regular extra firm, which usually needs pressing. Um, but then yes. I also have chopped up really small and then mixed in silken tofu so it kind of mimics kind of egg whites and stuff yes too. i like that oh you know what i did the other day we were going on a trip so i i had some tofu that i'd already pressed and i wanted to try this experiment anyway i thought oh i'm gonna freeze it because i'm gonna see what that texture turns out like i actually loved it i thought i would hate i'm kind of a texture person i don't really like weird textures I loved this. I cooked it up just like a stir with the stir fry and the sauces. It was my favorite tofu. I really liked it a lot. So anyway. Well, you know that's totally old style. It used to be you press your tofu or you freeze it. So like I yes. used to make because Molly um, Katzen is how I learned how to cook in okay. Moosewood and things. And it was Sundays at Moosewood in the Moosewood, yes, American yes. section, because this was an international cookbook here. I'll go back, because I'm, again, making all these hand um, things. <laughs> so, and she, it was a pressed tofu shepherd's pie. So, so well, like, wow. but you froze it, then you press mm -hmm. the water out like a sponge, and then you crumbled it up. And that's like, that's old style um, yes. crumbles. Right. Yes, but it actually, I mean, the the texture gets spongy when it's been frozen, and I could see where that would be a good crumble because it's it'd be easy to crumble it up and put that taco seasoning on it and cook it probably just like you do your soy curds. Back yes. in the old days, people would buy um, old, kitchen bouquet, which is a caramel coloring to color it to look like beef. <laughs> yes, I can totally see that. Now we don't I do did not that know now. that that stuff is vegan. Is it vegan? Kitchen bouquet. You know, I don't know off the top of my hand, but I'm pretty sure it's just caramel sure coloring. So that's probably oh, just okay. a burnt sugar. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really taste like and that. It. Makes everything better. Yeah. <laughs> but you can put a little soy sauce so in myself. there instead, and it gets dark. Yes, too. that's right. Yes, All right. Exactly. Let's see what the rest of this okay. is going to look like. So then, uh, then what I have here is two cups of cooked lentils, and I like to take out, uh, you know, maybe a half cup or three fourths of a cup, just because I like to add that in last and leave some texture. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to pulse this all together, and you want to—I don't know—I like seeing a little bit of lentils in there. I just do. Nothing wrong. With I do that, that with my veggie burgers. Nothing wrong with a little bit of texture. That's right. Mm -mm. And then uh, I just added that, and then and then we've got a cup of cooked quinoa. Now you could do brown rice. You don't have to do quinoa. I just like it, and I think it's nutritious and tasty. But like I say, brown rice would work great with that. So you could you could use any and, leftover grain you had from last night. Yeah, that's right. Any grain. That's exactly right. right. So the night before yeah. we could okay. make a lentil dish and cook extra lentils and some kind of something with grains and there you go. Yes, that's right. Then you're all ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna just this is the hard part. Because it's such a thick mixture, it's not gonna like go around it's not gonna start churning as easily as let's you know, as some things. But you just what I do is I just be very patient with this part. Just kind of stir it. We're trying to get the stuff that's around the blades up to the top. So 
I just kind of stir it a little bit, encourage the movement. And I think when you once you get that changed, you know, stirred up a little bit, then we can put the lid back on and pulse it again. And I just do this several times. And I was going to ask you, Kathy, how do you cook your lentils? Do you do it in your Instapot? Yeah, I do usually use the Instant Pot just because I like, one of the things I like about Instant Pots and slow cookers is you kind of can just leave it be. And I could be yes. somewhere else instead of being in front of the stove. What about you? I mean, right now I cook it in a saucepan. And it's one thing I love about lentils is they're so easy to cook. I mean, you just put them in a saucepan and get that water simmering and set the timer so you don't forget about them. <laughs> and you come back 25 minutes later and they're done. I just love that. That's awesome. And um, Iona says, wow, there are so many great ingredients in this meatless loaf. Yes, there is. Because Marley's yes, there awesome. Are so many yes. Why I brought her here. Now, um, this isn't for right this second. But Sherry would like to know if you would be willing to show your Costco tofu because different stores might have different kinds of things, if you have some. The only, the only problem is I, I, I just cooked my last batch, but I'm sorry. I mean, I, I just, we just had it, I think, probably last night for dinner, I think, or maybe the night before. But I, I, because um, in my fridge, I just take it out. It comes in a box of four. And I take it out of the box and just put in, put those little, the tubs yeah. in the fridge. So I don't have the package. I'm so sorry. Do you have one of the tubs or you cooked your last tub? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I cooked. That's what I'm saying. I cooked the last tub because I was like, okay. Like you, you had mentioned earlier, it sounds like a Costco trip. I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> I got to go to Costco now. <laughs> but um, I could leave a comment down if you want after the show is done. I'll, I'll leave a link Would love to that. the type of... Yes, because that's a good point. Every store feels like they, they carry different things. And I get disappointed because I'll see that somebody else yeah. got something really cool and then it won't be in ours. The people yes, in Portland exactly. seem to have like magical vegan Costco's. <laughs> magical vegan Costco's, MVCs. I love that. That, that should be a t-shirt too. I, <laughs> Oh my God, Kathy, that's just so good. Okay, so now we're going to add this reserved lentils. And this from this point forward, we're done with processing. We're just going to stir. And I add TVP. You don't have to add TVP. I have made this just like this, and it's fine. But I feel like adding the TVP gives it just a little bit more of that meaty texture. Mm -hmm. And it it just it, it makes it firmer, and and it's it's firm without it. It is, but it's just a little bit more firm with it. I like it. This part I just stir in. Well, and the thing is, is I think this meatloaf with the TVP too would be great to feed to someone who for their first vegan meal or someone who hasn't had something yes. like this because, you know, meatloaf is... Ev yes. Everybody either likes or hates meatloaf. I think eventually you end up liking it. If you become vegan, it's not meat meatloaf you like, but like I call it veggie loaf or lentil loaf or whatever. Yes. Like there's something magical about having a loafy thing that reminds you of growing up. Yeah, and I think if you live in the Midwest, it's kind of required that you like meatloaf. I'm just sorry. That's just <laughs> everybody here likes meatloaf or you just have to move. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, so here what I've done is I've prepared a loaf pan. This is not my typical loaf pan. I don't typically cook in a glass one, but I, you'll see in a second. I've, I've cooked one up ahead of time, so I, that, that's my typical pan. But glass pan works fine. Um, and what I do is I, I spread a little bit of oil around the sides, and some of that's not quite – just to make it easy to remove it, since you'll see that we're going to remove it in a second. I put a piece of parchment paper in, and then I spray it one more time with a little bit of vegetable oil. Again, I think you could probably just get away with just putting the parchment paper down. It's going to come out after that, but yeah, I and that's never how like I, leave anything I usually leave that as an oil-free option. And just the yes. only difference I would say between what you have right there and what I would do if I was doing it oil-free is I would make sure the parchment came up on either side, the longer side. Okay. Um, just oh, that's because good. Okay. Since you have oil, it's not going to stick in there. 
But if you don't have it's oil, not. it's going to attach to that side that doesn't have it, and you are going to chisel it out with a knife. <laughs> you sound like you're speaking from experience. Huh, perhaps. <laughs> yes. I think we've all been there, haven't we? Where something is, you're chiseling out of a dish. <laughs> and you're like, no. And what's the worst is when you're doing that, if you're in a metal pan and you're like, oh, I used to love this metal pan and I'm killing it. Yes. Now, Kathy, I bet you know this, but I'm wondering if the people in your audience know this, that at the bottom of a food processor, you can actually stick your finger in here and hold it so that if you're <gasps> wanting to not have the blade fall I've down. I've never done that. <laughs> it's so cool because I'm just so used to turning it like this and the blade flops out. But all you have to do is just, you know, there's a hole here. Stick your finger in that hole and it just, you hold the blade that way. Isn't that nice? That's crazy. That's, that's a wonderful and, tip. Thank you, Marley. Thank you. I'm full of it. <laughs> that's what my husband tells me all the time. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or you can just take the blade out. <laughs> And, you know, this part gets a little bit messy because what we're going to do is we're going to push this down into the pan because you want to, to help make the loaf firmer, you want to, you want to you push it down. You want, you want less air space between, you know, like right now you can see there's a lot of air space here. We don't want that. We want to push that down into the pan so we get a nice firm loaf that way. I like that. Because that's the thing, yeah. it's like so you don't want it to be crumbly, and if you press it together like that, that's what's going to make it really nice and sliceable, too. Yeah, sliceable, so that you can make meatloaf sandwiches, which is what we love to do, too. I love that. I love meatloaf sandwiches. <gasps> With a little bit of vegan mayo and a little bit of barbecue sauce on top. It's so good. Okay, so this goes into the oven that's preheated at 350 and cooks for 50 minutes, but... Through the magic of me knowing I was going to be on the show sooner, I actually already have one that's been cooked. So I'm going to show you what happens next. Really, Marley is this. a wizard, and she doesn't want you to know that. But I know so I'm <laughs> sharing it with you. It was magic. Magic. Look what I did. So I have this other pan. I hear parchment paper. Yeah, this is the part I didn't, I, there's always, it seems like there's one step that you don't think about ahead of time, and that is just one of them. So I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper and put this over my pan like this. I, you know, normally you might want to have a bigger one. So this one's already been baked for 50 minutes. You can see it's nice and firm. And I have a knife here, and I'm just going to cut around the edges just to help it release. And then you just take it out of the pan like that. You can see it came out very nicely. No, no sticking at all. You see that? That's awesome. <laughs> and now we're going to make this delicious sauce because to me, I mean, this is basically done at this point, but it's not really technically done. I'm going to turn my oven on because otherwise it's not going to bake. Um, what I do is I use, this is a half cup of ketchup. And I add to that, I, I know, and I, I feel actually kind of bad doing this because you, you might be thinking ketchup is sweet enough as it is, but we're going to add a little bit of brown sugar because, you know, why well, not? Everybody and can then make I, it I the add... way that they want it. So that, that's kind of how I, yes. I look at things because sometimes I may like, you might try something in mine and go, that's not sweet enough. And then another person's going to go, that's way too sweet. So I think it's yes. really awesome to make it just the way you like it and your family likes I it. I agree. This is why it's so important to cook from home is because you can decide how you like it. And actually, I was going to tell you, Kathy, that's one of the things I love about being vegan in the first place is that I have learned so much about myself. I think before I was just like this eater. I was just an eater. And I didn't pay attention. And it seems like the more I cook myself, the more, you know, longer I've been vegan, I know myself better. Like, oh, I guess I don't really like you know, I like pineapple now. I didn't used to like pineapple or I, I like, I like things that are not as sweet or things like that. But I think it's kind of nice to, to learn that about yourself as all. Well. It's true. I, th I kind of think that being vegan or even just changing your eating style at all. So when I was 18, I became vegetarian 
gosh, mm. I guess I've been vegan about 10 years now. But, you know, every time you make this kind of change, you learn new things. And Jackie says <laughs> that her family likes sweet tomato sauce on meatloaf. Mm, and yes. um, I didn't say this to you, but I had put it up here. But Apple says it looks so firm and mushy loaves are always so disappointing. And there was a wow and a yeah. genius about your hold on to the blade and the food processor hack, too. <laughs> good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that was a good tip to share because I was afraid everybody else would be like, oh, yeah, we've known that for years. <laughs> How are you just discovering that? Oh, <laughs> so good. I'm glad. Um, and now I'm going to add just, this is a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, ground nutmeg, um, because I think it adds just a little bit of pizzazz. I, I did the first time I did it, I, I was too much. So I found a quarter teaspoon is just the right amount. So I'm going to stir that all together. And this is going to be that glorious sauce. I just think sauces are magical. Don't you think, Kathy? They just transform anything into something amazing. Oh, absolutely. And it, it, it takes so little effort to get those yes. really big flavors. And it would take a lot yes. more effort to not use that sauce and get the same sort of flavor out of the loaf. Uh-huh, that's right. And I I love the end pieces of meatloaf because of that very reason. Because I like, I let the, cat, the sauce just kind of cascade over like that. And then, and then I bake it. And so what happens is this, it, as it bakes, it gets a, that coating just gets nice and firm. It's beautiful and tastes delicious. Yum. I'm firm just mad that, that you're not bringing it's me like a, a piece. Say that again. I said, I'm, I'm just mad I'm not you're, not, you're not bringing me a piece. You need to hop on a plane oh. and bring me some meatloaf sandwich. I mean, I, I would be happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question is, would you, this would normally go back into the oven and cook for 15 more minutes. That's what I would normally do. But would you like me to cut a piece now so that sure, you can see what it looks yeah. like on the inside? I don't know where we're at on time, but yeah, I think we're getting close. So we I'll just to cut a piece. Time. So it can go long, uh, it can go short. It's whatever we want it to do. <gasps> yeah. Oh, good. that looks Look so that. very good. You can see little bits of carrot in there. And I like the carrot because they add some natural sweetness and texture and a little bit, you can see of uh, lentils and it just bakes up very nicely. And like I say, I, I like serving this for, like you had said, people that you know are new to veganism. This is a great meal to make because, oops, I just made a mess. Because uh, it's meaty, it's delicious, and you can serve it with mashed potatoes, and everybody loves. I mean, it's just like such a comfort. I find this to be my favorite comfort food meal. I Yeah, because I like it. I just do. Oh, no, I love it. I, was, I yeah. wish I was there having some right now. I'm not kidding you with that one. And Jackie says it's too. a wonderful texture. Yes, it is a wonderful texture. And the flavors are so good because I think the personally the sausage flavors really set it off. I used to make this with do you remember that product, Kathy, that was called what was it called? Beyond sausage or Gimme Gimme Oh Gimme Lean. Gimme Lean. Gimme Lean. Yes. And I don't think that's around anymore. Right? Yes. Yes. It has become harder and harder to find it and and uh, yeah, so anyway, so this kind of gives it that sausagey flavor, and I think it's perfect. But I love it, yeah. and I like oh. your. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. So I put this back on together, and I'm like leaning out of the frame. Um, <laughs> I mm. used to love give me lean. I used to make sausage gravy with it, and mm. in my first book, mm -hmm. I made kind of a. I was trying to make like a give me lean substitute. But it was confusing to people because you cook it some and then you use it yes. to cook and people were like, what? What? So. <laughs> yeah. And so what, what are your thoughts on it? It seems like there are so many really good vegan products these days. I like them. I don't, I know some, some people are, you know, maybe not as for them, but I really do like them. Well, and my, my standpoint is that if it's not for you, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not okay for other people. Yes, exactly. So mm -hmm. like, because people get upset sometimes, and we've had some discussions mm -hmm. sometimes about some of the different things, like Cheryl became vegan and plant-based 
because of Impossible Burgers and Beyond Sausage. There you go. Right? And so yes. and now yes. it's interesting because she's more likely to crave a plain veggie burger. Every once in a while, she wants a Beyond Burger or something. Yes. And, and you know what doesn't help people eat healthier? Shaming them. Right. So I so agree with you. What I do is I 100%, whoever you are out there, if you're on a special diet, I 100% support you. And I will mm -hmm. try and help you find substitutes for different recipes, Marley's, mine, anybody's. Right. Um, in Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, it's, it's not huge. It's like 8,000 people. But we have plant-based people and vegans. And so every once really like once a year there'll be a little bubble up you know someone will say how who likes beyond sausage and those people are like, don't eat that it's 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 crap it's oil and and yes it, it you know is it a health producing product next to this tomato i grew no <laughs> But neither right, is right. bread, yeah. right? Right, so exactly. It's all in layers. Even being a vegan is in layers. You pick where your boundaries yes. are. And they right. have to, it's personal because there are animal products used in bicycle tires, car tires, right? So like, right. it's easy to make these decisions and, and on food. For me, that's real easy. Yes. But like, I've drawn a line that I don't want to know it in tires and not in tires anymore because it, right i don't live in a city yeah so <laughs> right. so i can't walk everywhere and um yeah. and jackie's saying too that impossible and beyond um products let me make one meal for me and my non-vegan husband on occasion instead of two separate right. ones right and oh that's so nice yeah i found with the pandemic too and so this is this may be a little bit of a rant but I feel, because I feel it in me too. So I'm not just like pointing the finger at everybody else, but like our patience is shorter. We're, our knee jerk reaction yeah, isn't that. necessarily to be helpful and kind. And so I try to yeah. stop and think about that because I feel like people are just yeah. like, ah, it's not for me. So therefore yes. it shouldn't be for you. But yes. you know what? It's okay if Marley uses ketchup and I make my own ketchup. It's even okay right. in the recipe. I put tomato powder instead of her ketchup. Yes. And you know what? Yes. It doesn't make Marley's recipe for Marley any different. It, it just makes a yeah. great version that I can have. And I eat ketchup. So I'm, I'm kind of just making this up. But just I know. as an example, because <laughs> people are going to be like, wait, you use ketchup sometimes. Um, but it doesn't So Kathy, matter. I call myself... I call myself a secular vegan because I, I am kind of, I'm exactly the same way. Like I, I don't, I, I don't really like what I believe doesn't have to be what, what you believe. And I just don't get into all the nitty gritty and the dogma of certain things. I mean, if, if people want to get into that, I'm happy for them I'm trying to think somebody left a comment recently about cocoa powder, not being vegan. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, you know, I think people can, it, it's easy to take that down a, a really narrow path. And I'm, if that's the narrow path you want to live on, that's great. But I just don't think that the, it's going to be a narrow path that everybody could be on. So exactly. Uh, anyway. Yeah. And I totally agree yeah. with you. Cause like the same thing with plant-based and healthful eating can go yes. down and get very narrow and very dogmatic as yes. well to, to, right you know, well, that's great that you made your own tomato powder, but were those tomatoes organic? Right? And so, <laughs> exactly. and here's the thing. Or non-GMO. Yes, exactly. Right, right, right. If right, someone yeah. needs to mm -hmm. eat all organic food, I'm, I am here to support you. Yes. I'm here to support oh, you it. if Go you are, are doing... I admire you. Right. Yes. Meatless Monday, maybe you're still eating yes. meat. You're welcome in my group. You can only post about vegan recipes and ask questions about vegan recipes. Yes. But what you do outside that group is not my business. And right. by us being there and supporting you and giving you the best meatloaf or lasagna recipe that you can share with your whole family, to me, I feel very passionate about that. It's If I can't be convinced in a way, then I'm not going to try and convince someone else in a way. So me going, mm. you're not eating well. Is that making you feel like you want to 
follow me now? Or if I go, oh, this is so good, and you know what? It doesn't have any oil. It was easy. Mm-hmm. To me, I see. Yes. And that's my personal philosophy, too, is that, um, and I, I often say that they're really only like three mean vegans, but they make a schedule so they can say something crappy every minute of every day on somebody. Yeah. You're not vegan yeah. enough. No, that's not this enough. And, and infighting yeah. does nothing. It doesn't make people more vegan. Yeah. And if, if me yelling at you to be vegan and not eat meat, mm-hmm. turn that around. So if someone was yelling at you in the same way saying you should eat meat and this is why you should eat meat, would that change your mind? Won't right. change mine. I can tell you that right now. Yes, and exactly. I think it's important for us to put ourselves in the, in that position. Ooh. I love it. Yeah. So anyhow, that was my soapbox for the day. Thank you for agreeing with I me. I like it. <laughs> I told Marley, I'm like, the it's conversations simpatico. just go where they go. And she was probably like, uh-oh. And I didn't realize we were going to no. be talking about these hard, this is kind of a hard hitting topic kind of in the plant-based and vegan community. But the thing is, it's it's okay to be the vegan that you are. It's also okay to be the aspiring vegan or the aspiring plant-based person. Yes, yes, I love it. We welcome you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And everybody, I know everybody's welcome on Marley's site. Everybody's welcome Mm -hmm. where I am. And you'll find i always say even if you have a dish that you you, you've made your whole life and you wish you had a vegan version of it you don't send me a note i'll see what i can do to help you you know i'm happy to do that (laughs) exactly and i think that that's that's the way that we get to grow as a community and it makes things better for all of us i know not everyone feels that way and i tend to avoid controversial topics but there you have it and just, we went there. We went there. Be the best person that you can be that fits with your moral compass. That's really what we're I saying. I love it. And yes, it's great. You know, there's a part of me that would love to live in the woods with solar and all the things and not have to do that. But do you know what? Yes. Um, Cheryl takes out the trash because I won't take out the trash. I don't think I can live out in the woods with solar. Yeah, and not, you may right? not be able to make. <laughs> I have some limitations. How am I plugging in my four instant pots and my air fryer, right? So, right, exactly. You know, kind of like my ultimate ideal may not be livable for me, but that doesn't mean I can't be my best moral self. And part right. of my moral compass is that I want to be there to support you on your journey. And, um, mm. oh, Cindy, this is so sweet. She says, thank you, ladies, for being awesome inspiration for, the, for us who are just starting. Exactly. Aww. And the thing is, is yeah. 98, probably 99% of all plant-based and vegan people grew up eating meat. So right. everyone right. started out. And Lydia's saying hi. And Lydia's awesome. She lives in Montreal. And she's been a little mm, under the beautiful. weather lately so i'm glad to see you and i hope you're feeling enchanté <laughs> i like that we'll do the french version we'll we'll get four little blocks <laughs> yes. and we'll bring you in to translate because if i oh you don't want to hear me trying to say french words i'm sure but, <laughs> hmm. i just grew up in north carolina and i read a lot so that's why i'm like even english words i'm like well questionable yes i yeah yeah you know if you're if you're a reader you know a lot of things but you don't know how to say them so marley is there anything you would like to end and leave us with um well just thanks for joining us this was a lot of fun and i really enjoy you know meeting you all and i'm gonna look forward to uh, reading the comments afterwards and and i hope you try this recipe because it is pretty easy i mean it does take a little bit of time to uh put it together but if you're looking for something easy and the rest of it is just it's just cooking in the oven and you can go get your nails done or whatever and then you come back and you've got this delicious meatloaf and i i love it i I really do think it's one of my favorite things especially in the summertime i know that sounds weird but um, just because we like the meatloaf sandwiches and i i will even 
put a cool piece of this, like it's refrigerated after you're done and I, I'll put it in a salad. So yeah, it's really delicious. Oh, you know what would be interesting though? Kind of weird. Like I could see crumbling it up like a taco salad. Yes, absolutely. No, it's yes. not exactly oh, yeah. a one to one, but well, thank you I, so yeah. much for being on and thank being you, willing Kathy. to just be like, hang out and have a conversation with me. I, hopefully you'll come back. Hopefully we were nice enough because we would. Like I would to love to come back for sure. Yes. Oh, absolutely. We could do a dessert next time. <gasps> we'll do a dessert. Ooh, I like desserts. Um, yes, and I'm me working too. on too many. Yeah. Yeah. And Jackie says, so mm -hmm. good to see you both. Been following Marley for quite a while. And you know, I'm also a Kathy Hester fan. Jackie, you're so sweet. Yes. Um, I'm well, with you, Jackie. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, and thank you so much. We'll definitely work about having you back on. You were just a pleasure. It's always fun hanging out with you. Maybe next time yeah, you too. you'll bring me some meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Yes. Okay, everybody. Have a great rest okay. of your week and enjoy yourselves.